for those of you that are just joining us, please um, let us know that uh, if you're having any technical issues at all, you should be able to see me, hear me, and see the slides. So by my time, it is 11 a.m. here in Kingston, Ontario, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, before I begin, I do want to do a land acknowledgement. Um, today, I acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the Cataraque, which means great meeting place, and it is now referred to as Kingston. This is a traditional meeting place of many, but most Recently, the indig Indigenous Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. Our Canadian history involves acts of destruction against Indigenous peoples and the lands they inhibit. We all come from somewhere. I am here today working on this land due to a great many privileges. And the reason we do this is uh, to acknowledge the lands that were um, that are here because of the privileges of and hard work and um, sacrifices uh, that those that have come before us have made. And it is important that as I sit on these lands, I acknowledge uh, where I am and give honor and um, to those to those people. So that's the purpose of why we do a land acknowledgement. So thank you. Um, we're here today to discuss the full-time MBA program. I am very happy uh, to, to say it is a sunny day, happy spring. Um, and for those of you that are not in Canada, um, this is the time where we start to shift uh, the weather and we start to see the sun come out more, the flowers are blooming. It is a really beautiful time to be in Kingston. So before we begin, today's presentation is going to be recorded, so if you feel you've missed anything, don't worry, you will get a copy of the recording within two to three business days. As well, um, it is going to be on our YouTube channel, and you will be able to share it. Um, so if there's anyone who you, you feel might be interested in learning more about the Smith MBA, don't hesitate to pass it on. Uh, please get familiar with the chat and Q&A function. I will be answering questions um, at the end of today's presentation. I generally uh, present for about 20, 25 minutes or so. I do like to open it up and allow time for Q&A. Um, the uh, session today should run about 30 minutes in total. So uh, I will try and, and leave plenty of time for all of your questions. If you feel that you've missed any questions, uh, asking any questions, don't worry, you can reach out to us at any point in time. We do have a live chat function on our website, so you can speak to a staff member in live time during regular business hours as well. And um, I do have my email address here, so please jot it down. Uh, feel free to email me directly and connect with me at any point in time. So my name is Teresa Perez and I'm the Associate Director of Recruitment and Admissions for the Full-Time MBA program. It has been a great privilege to be able to do this job now for just over 10 years. I've seen many um, students come through and still stay connected with quite a lot of alumni, which I love. The best part of my job is being able to, to be a part of this amazing network uh, that the Smith School of Business offers. So we are based in Kingston, Ontario. So for those of you who are not familiar, we are right in between Toronto and Montreal. Uh, Canada, as you uh, may be aware, is a thriving and welcoming country, uh, very open for immigration in terms of its immigration policies. Typically with a one-year program like ours, you get a one-year work permit. Uh, however, most of our students secure jobs and are able to get up to a three-year work permit. So it really is very dependent on the immigration officer and your place uh, within um, the employment sector. Uh, we have been ranked number one um, for best quality of life. Um, and this is uh, also something we are very proud of to be ranked number one for women to live. Um, Kingston is a dynamic a small city, about 160,000 people. But it is got all the amenities and resources, attractions that you may want and need as a student here. So in our uh, program, we do see about 40% international students. This year alone, we're representing 19 different nationalities. So within a, a cohort of about 80 to 85 students, that is quite diverse. Um, and so within the full-time MBA program, you are getting uh, quite a lot of diversity in terms of business experiences, uh, as well as uh, personal experiences in terms of the geography of where our students are coming from. So here's just an aerial view of the campus. As you can see, this uh, yellow arrow here is where uh, you would be studying as a full-time MBA student, uh, Goods Hall. Um, you do have access to a team room for you and your six other teammates throughout the entire year of the program. The team rooms are designed like 
boardrooms. So it, we simulate a real world business environment in our MBA program. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, most of our students are living within a five to 10 minute walking distance uh, to Goods Hall. Uh, you can see here different um, markers for our library, which uh, most of our students, um, you know, all of your cases, textbooks and materials are delivered right to your desk. So they don't frequent the library too often because you do have that individual team room. However, it is there if you're looking for a quiet area. Uh, as well, the International Center, uh, which offers great resources for our international students, events, activities, lots of different things happening there. And then the, our, our, uh, what we call the ARC uh, Athletics and Recreation Center as well. So as part of your um, tuition, you do get access to the recreational facilities and all that they offer as well. So studying in Canada offers you a world-class business education. It is globally recognized in a variety of different sectors, banking, energy, et cetera. Um, we have seen a great growth in technology and entrepreneurship, as well as healthcare. Um, it is an easy path uh, to post-graduation employment opportunities. Uh, as I said earlier, most of our students uh, do stay and work in Canada um, and get up to a three-year work permit when they complete the program. Uh, most of our students as well as alumni do um, go down the path of securing their permanent residency. Um, so that is always a great honor to see how many students actually uh, stay within Canada and, and get that permanent residency. And it is a stable and peaceful, welcoming, um, not just city, but also country. Uh, so if Canada is a destination where you see yourself uh, staying and working, you can rest assured that it's going to be one of the best options for you. At, not just as a student, but also as a working professional as you move into that um, career post-MBA. So if, as you're thinking about um, this MBA program and, and generally as a whole, why an MBA, um, it does help to give you that credibility, right? It, it helps to accelerate your career. Uh, we've seen that year over year in candidates that are looking to pivot or transition careers, uh, as well as expand your network. You're meeting people that you wouldn't otherwise have had an opportunity to connect with. Uh, we recruit very holistically. So you you will have uh, candidates in your program, peers in your program that are coming from not just across the globe, but um, have a variety of different um, working experiences and, and personal experiences that they're bringing uh, to the classroom and to those discussions. It's also going to improve your communication skills. Um, this is an area where um, I think is undervalued in, in how you're potentially doing your research um, and going through this journey of identifying which is the best program for you. Communication skills are so important today um, and being able to understand and, and develop and work towards enhancing those skills are so critical. Um, in our program, you do have a small cohort. So all students are in one classroom together. Uh, so you do get to know your peers very well. The purpose of this is to enhance your comfort um, and your trust amongst your peers, but also to build on those communication skills. You're put into small teams, and that's also going to help enhance your management and leadership opportunities. You're going to have um, an opportunity to work with four different coaches. Uh, you have a career coach that's going to help you with your career progression and securing that dream job. Uh, you also have um, what we call an executive coach, act as more of a mentor uh, to help you develop personally. Uh, you also have a team coach in place. So during the first six months, you are going to be in that team dynamic. And so uh, you are going to have someone there to help mitigate any issues that might arise, but also give you tips and guidance to be successful as a team. And then lastly, uh, there's a program called Fit to Lead. So this is essentially a, a coach that uh, works on your well-being. And there's uh, going to be um, a fitness coach available to you. Um, so it's going to be an opportunity for you to, uh, to, to really develop yourself personally and professionally throughout the entire program. And I'd be remiss without mentioning that we have been ranked number one in the country for overall satisfaction with the program uh, in financial times, as well as number one for career services. And you'll see that um, you'll see that in our job acquisition statistics with a 98 percent employment rate. So how you can be an ideal MBA candidate, at the end of the day, we do take a very um, holistic approach, right? So we're looking at candidates uh, from a variety of different lenses. Um, the first, of course, being your intellectual horsepower. So looking at how you are going to um, be able to, to manage the academics or the rigor. So we're looking at your GPA. Uh, essentially, we want to see a better B average in the last two years. Uh, of your undergraduate degree. So our, our 
primary um, recommendation is that you have that four-year undergraduate degree. If you have a master's degree or any designations on top of that, that will help to bolster your application. But in order to qualify you, we're looking for that, that four-year undergraduate degree. And then, of course, your GMAT or GRE. It is compulsory to have one or the other. So we recommend um, taking the test that best suits your abilities. Uh, we look at them equally. Um, the GMAT minimum is 600, and the minimum for the GRE is 315. And then over to work ethic and resiliency. So we can see this in your resume, um, your accomplishments, your progression in your career is essentially what we're looking at. Um, we do as well uh, look for anything outside of your of your career um, that helps to identify leadership. So if you have any volunteer experience, any board experience, etc., please ensure you're putting that on your resume as well, because those are things that we're going to look for um, as well um, as your progression in your career specifically. Interpersonal skills and EQ, so important, again, going back to that communication skill being so uh, prevalent, not just in your success in the MBA, but also um, in your success uh, post MBA. Interpersonal skills can be seen in many ways. Uh, every interaction, of course, that you have with us, your interview, as well as what your references are saying. So keep that in mind and choose references that are going to be able to speak to this. All right, coachability and team experience. So we are a program that really values team-based experiences. So if you are part of any sports-related activities, extracurriculars, if you coached or been coached, these are all experiences that we want to hear about. Um, and it will really lend itself to the MBA experience uh, because we are team-based. And so we do put you into small teams based on your diversity, um, but all uh, Ultimately, what we're trying to do is put together what we call high performance teams. So we want to ensure that you're going to be successful, that it's going to be a teaching and a learning environment. And so we can see um, this uh, through what you have experienced um, in your career, as well as any extracurriculars that you have. So please include those on your resume as well. So essentially, these four different areas are how we're assessing you to make up what an ideal MBA candidate would look like, uh, both in terms of acceptance as well as um, securing a scholarship. All right, so we do have a modern, modern methodology. And what I mean by that is we are blended. Uh, we don't have one specific way of teaching. We are not uh, traditional from that perspective. We want to ensure that you're getting a variety of different uh, ways in which you're going to learn to enhance your abilities, both in, in skills that are going to be valuable in the MBA, but also um, in what uh, skills are going to be prevalent and important in your career post MBA. Um, so this is why we uh, really feel it's valuable to have that experiential learning or real world business projects uh, under your belt, um, real simulations, live cases. It's not just about case-based methodology. That's not what you're going to be doing in the real world. So what we try to do is build both those technical expertise and interpersonal skills to ensure that you're very well-rounded and that you're building on the foundational skills that are going to make you successful in any career that you pursue. So in all of our courses, this is going to vary, um, you know, in terms of your deliverables. But in the first six months of the MBA, you are going to be doing about 50% team-based uh, work. And so um, there are going to be lots of presentations, for example. There's going to be opportunities for you to lead your team, to manage the project, et cetera. So this is, again, and putting into practice what you're learning through these real world business projects that you're going to have and experiential learning opportunities. So keep that in mind as you're doing your, your research that we really have this practical modern methodology really blended um, in what you're going to be learning throughout the year in your MBA. So going back to that description of, of what it really means to be in a team, uh, we are mirroring today's uh, workplace, right? Uh, the reality is, is you're very unlikely to work solo. Um, in every organization, you're going to have to work cross-functionally to some regard and, and work with people that have very different experiences uh, to yours. And so this is why when we put teams together, we're really focused on strengths and weaknesses. Um, this is a photo of what a real team looks like, what a real team room looks like. As you can see, it's designed like a boardroom. Um, and this is really to en enable and enhance your communication skills, but really ensure that you're being successful and working together as a unit during the first six months. 
So this is really the only way to truly develop team and leadership skills is by uh, working in a dynamic like this in a safe zone um, during your MBA and getting that advice and uh, support with a team coach uh, to mitigate any issues that might arise and to hold your team members accountable as well. So again, we don't just uh, put you into teams and wish you well. We do have lots of support uh, around what that might look like and to ensure your success at the end of it. So really our Smith Edge, uh, this, this dimensional um, ability uh, to work in teams to develop interpersonal skills are really what employers are looking for today. Uh, mimicking sort of those simulated environments uh, in offering you leadership roles is, is really um, important in today's environment and getting that through our MBA does ensure success at the end and that can of course be seen in our employment statistics year over year. So this is one of the unique aspects that you're getting in our program that you won't see anywhere else. And the support that we have around um, building these teams is, is uh, really quite unique. Um, and so it's something to keep in mind um, that you're getting here and that you won't see anywhere else if you're looking at other MBA programs. There's always gonna be group work, but the way we do it and simulate it like a real world business environment is what sets us apart and makes us unique in terms of your experience. Going back to uh, why, um, you know, your, your return on investment is probably the most important aspect of why you would be pursuing an MBA. So you've got to factor that in. Uh, we are one of the uh, most successful MBA programs in terms of employment statistics. We have the highest employment statistics of any MBA program in the country. You can see here 98% three months after graduation, um, which is phenomenal. We host over a hundred employer events year over year. So this is a fabulous way for you to network, especially if you're not familiar with the Canadian landscape. Um, but even if you are, uh, most students are looking to pivot or, or um, completely transition their career. So what an amazing way uh, for you to meet with uh, different employers, figure out what your next career move is going to look like by sort of dipping your feet in and understanding uh, what uh, organizations um, look like, what they're offering in terms of employment opportunities and seeing if that's going to be a place and space where you can work. Uh, and this is what an MBA offers you, the ability to sort of test the market and see what's out there, work with your career coach, attend events throughout the year to really see if it's a place you want to be, and um, the uh, ability to, to network uh, throughout uh, the year, even, you know, outside of the on-campus recruitment timeframe, which is in August, um, is so strategic in, in that, you know, you start in January, you've got eight months under your belt, you've already done the core of the MBA. Um, so that's really in terms of our timing, uh, what also sets us apart and makes us unique is that you're as best prepared as you can be to go back into that job market. Most of our students do stay in uh, Toronto uh, within Ontario. Our program is about two and a half hours from Toronto. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Kingston, some do stay in Kingston, a small percentage. Um, and then those that, um, you know, are going abroad, uh, less than 5% generally, um, but still the ability to go abroad if that's important to you. We do have exchange options where you can go um, and study, take elective courses abroad if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, we do have over 38 partners in 24 countries. So something to keep in mind that if that international exposure is important to you, that the ability is there uh, to go abroad. But like I said, majority of our candidates do end up and, and stay within Canada, majority in Toronto, which is our biggest market. Cost of living, so let's get down to brass tacks in terms of what the program fees are. So generally speaking, this is an estimate on individual preferences. So again, this is going to be completely dependent on what your uh, situation um, looks like. If you're bringing a family or support with you, of course, these are going to increase your costs. Uh, but based on individual preferences, you can average uh, 18 to 20, 25 um, on top of the tuition costs, okay? So of course, this is just an average monthly breakdown um, of what you can expect to be paying outside of the tuition costs. So tuition um, includes all of your cases textbooks. We are an all-inclusive fee outside of cost of living. So you do have to factor that in when you're thinking about um, how you would fund this uh, program. Think about it, it, your cost of living as being outside of the tuition costs, okay? So the tuition fees are 83,000 for domestic students and 104 for international students. This does include um, everything I've just mentioned in terms of your coaching, all of the services provided to you are included. Um, the only additional fees are going to be your living expenses. There's also no application fee. It is free to apply to our program. 
And we do have significant scholarships. About 70% of our students do receive a scholarship and they range from lower end 5,000 up to $70,000 Canadian. Um, for scholarships, they're all merit-based. So everything I've discussed earlier in terms of qualifications are going to be assessed um, in order to qualify you for a scholarship. We do have amazing um, donor-based awards that you might want to take a look at on our website, as well as specific um, demographic uh, awards as well. So we do have uh, scholarships just for women. Uh, we have partnered with Ramba, Reaching Out MBA for LGBTQ+, as well as Access to Success for those that have visible or invisible disabilities. And then, of course, our Black and Indigenous Awards as well. So <clears throat> keep in mind that if you qualify for any one of those, you want to identify that in the application. <clears throat> as well, we do have the RBC Student Line of Credit. So this is for um, domestic students or those that hold permanent residency. And then for international students, we do partner with Empower. Uh, so take a look at what they offer in terms of international loan options for, for you if you're an international student. And so um, you're, in order to meet our requirements, uh, we do want to see a cover letter and resume, academic background, two years of a four-year undergraduate degree, about a BB plus average is what we're looking for. If you don't have a quantitative background, that's okay. Don't self-select yourself out. Um, that's where the standardized test comes into play, right? The GMAT or the GRE can tell us um, a little bit more about your quantitative ability. Hence why we do require uh, the GMAT or the GRE. And so um, keep in mind that that's something you'd have to prepare for if you haven't already written either test. So you do have to take two to three months to diligently prepare uh, to write um, either the GMAT or the GRE. In terms of work experience, we're looking for a minimum of two years and then two professional references from that work experience. OK, so within the last five years, ideally, um, references should be direct super supervisors. Uh, we advise not to choose academic references or peers. Um, we're essentially looking for those that have assessed you in some in some capacity. And then two video questions and one written response are going to be part of one platform. We send you the URL and you complete it in one sitting. It shouldn't take more than 10, 15 minutes to complete this. Uh, this has replaced our written essays. And so the video questions are just a way for us to see how, um, well you can, how well you can answer a question under pressure, but how concisely you can answer that as well. And we're not really looking for a right answer. There is no right or wrong answer. We're just uh, assessing you for how quickly and concisely you can respond, as well as English proficiency if English is not your first language. If all that looks good, then we will invite you to an interview. That's as uh, straightforward as uh, you can get. Um, we do in interview um, quite um, a lot of candidates year over year. So approximately 300 for a class of 80 uh, to 82, 85 students year over year. Um, so if uh, you know something in your application isn't uh, strong, then we will let you know. We don't take anyone to the end of an application without seeing that potential for your success. We do have an amazing application advisor, Terry Lynn, um, who will work with you. Um, so essentially the role of our application advisors is to provide you a preliminary assessment, to review your resume, to review your transcripts, and then walk you through um, the next steps. Um, again, she is there to help her present a strong case on your behalf. Uh, so work uh, working with Terry Lynn is really going to um, help you in order to uh, provide uh, the strongest profile that you can of course, in order to be successful in our program. All right, so the next steps, uh, you want to submit your resume and unofficial transcripts for that preliminary assessment. You want to visit our website for any upcoming events. And then, of course, schedule a coffee chat with either myself or um, one of our student ambassadors, which you can do at any point in time right on our website. So I recommend doing that to get to know a little bit more about our program, but also uh, learning firsthand from our current students what it is like to be an, a Smith MBA and to understand their student experience thus far. So our students are student ambassadors. Uh, have just started this January. They're all back in class um, and in the building, which is amazing to see. We've come out of this pandemic and we've had um, multiple variety of ways in which our students have learned, um, both completely virtually hybrid and now fully back um, in class. So um, these students can really speak to, uh, to that in terms of um, you know, starting the program, being virtual, and now being fully back in class. So please reach out to our student ambassadors, ask them questions, uh, learn a little bit more about what our program has to offer. 
Keep in mind, we are enrolling in missions. So uh, for international students, we recommend that you apply before September. Um, we are, are already filling up um, and uh, for international students, uh, we will be moving to a wait list shortly. Um, so keep in mind that um, if you haven't yet written your GMAT or GRE to do that uh, as soon as possible, but um, to ensure that you're getting your application completed by um, the end of August. All right, uh, I do also recommend that you follow us on all of our social media channels, again, to understand uh, and appreciate more about what we're doing as a school, and not just within the MBA program, but this is really a big family. And so when you're part of Smith, you're part of the entire network. And so it's important that you uh, start understanding what we offer, do your research, do your due diligence, and, and learn a little bit more about us before you get to that interview. Just a tip, we might ask you about what research you've done. Um, and so, uh, again, if this is your number one choice, then make sure you're taking advantage of all the opportunities that we do offer and tap into those social media avenues uh, for you to learn a little bit more about us. So I'm going to now open it up to Q&A. Um, we ha do have a few minutes left. So if you do have any questions, please go ahead and uh, type those into the Q&A um, or raise your hand and I'm happy to, to answer your question live as well. All right, first question. Usually the full-time MBA is a two-year program. So how is Queen's MBA different? Uh, is it more rigorous than a one-year program? Um, so yes, traditionally, uh, full-time MBA programs were designed to be two years. Uh, they started in the U.S. Um, as two-year programs. And if you look back at the history, at, at that time when MBAs were developed, they were an opportunity for you to um, go into this program without much work experience. Today, uh, MBA programs have evolved and typically the average years of work experience is four or five years. And so from that perspective, we find that candidates don't need to have that internship to be successful. And so we follow a European model. We were the first in Canada to move to a one year and our employment statistics statistics speak for themselves in terms of our success rate um, and not having that internship. Our, jo our job is to really get you um, a job at the end of the day. And so, um, you know, the two-year formats typically have uh, more of a spread out time frame opportunity to do internships. And so, yes, um, to your question, it is likely more rigorous uh, in that you're um, in class 8.30 to 4.30, Monday to Friday during the first six months of our MBA. So that is designed like a business and environment designed like a working day and so that's uh if if one thinks that is more rigorous then then maybe it is um in comparison to to, to the two-year programs <clears throat> is the program only offered as a full-time mba or is there a part-time program uh, for those who are currently working uh, we do have multiple opportunities uh, within the mba suite of options we have the full-time mba which is a residential program um, and that requires you to be in Kingston for the entire year. We also have an accelerated MBA, which is a professional or part-time option. That program is also one year and it is designed for those that have an undergraduate degree in business. So if you have a BCom or a BBA, uh, you could potentially look at the accelerated MBA. It starts in January, so similar timeframe to the full-time MBA, so January to December, and it is delivered on Sundays and half day Mondays, two times a month. So I recommend taking a look at our website to learn a little bit more about the accelerated MBA. And those with 10 plus years of work experience, we do have two executive MBA options that you do while you work. So the accelerated and executive options are designed uh, for you to do while you work. All right, I would like to know if Queens also offer GMAT waiver under any special circumstances. Uh, we would consider a, a GMAT or standardized test waiver if you have a CFA designation. Um, in some cases, we'll also look at an undergraduate degree if you have a strong quantitative background. Um, however, very uh, rare do we waive the GMAT or GRE. So really only if you have that CFA um, typically. Having not given a GMAT as of yet, but planning to do so by May, aiming for January intake, can I still submit the form of a preliminary assessment? Absolutely. Uh, you can submit um, your preliminary assessment without the standardized test at any point in time. Uh, we will um, 
We will absolutely review your work experience and your undergraduate uh, degree um, as a preliminary assessment. Keep in mind that we are a small program, only 40% international students. And so we are looking for diversity as well. So we're looking at what we already have. Um, if we feel like uh, you know uh, we need to diversify um, from different regions, then we will put your application on hold. Um, so keep that in mind that of course, in order to be as diverse as possible, we need to look at uh, where you're coming from in terms of geography as well, okay? All right, so good to know about the Accelerated MBA and is offered online. No, all of our MBA programs are offered um, uh, in person. Um, and I say that with trepidation. So basically what it means is that there is no online MBA option. You would have to physically be in Canada to pursue the accelerated or accelerated options. And you do not need to have a standardized test typically for the part-time options. So for the accelerated and executive um, MBA, um, typically they're looking at your undergraduate degree. Um, you do have to have a business undergrad for the accelerated MBA. And so they're looking at your grades in specific business courses um, in order to qualify you. But again, that's where the preliminary assessment comes in. Um, so I recommend taking a look at um, the Accelerated MBA on the website, looking at the qualifications, and then submitting your resume and unofficial transcripts for that, um, for that assessment. Okay, I think I've already answered this question. Um, the, uh, the accelerated MBA, again, for business undergrads, uh, you may or may not be required to have the GMAT. It is not compulsory like it is in the full time. Again, I recommend having that preliminary assessment done. They'll look at your transcripts and see if you have those business core courses that are required, uh, and then they'll move you forward. All right, so in the full-time MBA program, the minimum is two years of work experience. Uh, you do not need to have more than that. The minimum is two years, but we'll assess all on quality of two years of work experience. Um, but uh, generally, the range for full-time is two to nine years. All right, does residential MBA maybe for free. I really want to study there. However, I don't have the resource. Okay, so uh, our MBA program is not free, unfortunately. Sorry, uh, we do have um, a fee, a tuition fee of 104000 for international students and 83000 for domestic students. Uh, we do have significant scholarship and you can, can get loans, but I strongly recommend that you look at personal savings or alternative funding options within your home country. Um, we do also have a preferred lender within Canada, RBC. Um, so, uh, you know, we do not have fully funded scholarships. So you do need to prepare financially and do your due diligence to ensure that this is something you can afford or find the resources to be able to afford this prior to um, submitting an application. All right, so uh, basically uh, the way um, the way it works for the uh, part-time options is uh, we do have, so for the accelerated and executive options, we do have boardrooms across Canada. So the programs are based in Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, Ottawa, Montreal, and three locations in the Toronto GTA area. So if you are interested in the accelerated or executive options, recommend going onto our website, again, doing that preliminary assessment to learn a little bit more about those options. So you do physically have to come to a boardroom in order to pursue those programs, but they are delivered uh, uh, typically on the weekends or half day on um, Mondays for the accelerated program, two times a month. All right, can the IELTS score uh, requirement be waived if an applicant from a non-English native country have done undergrads from university where mode of English? Yeah, so if you studied in English, uh, and most often you do not need to have that um, IELTS or TOEFL as part of the requirement for um, acceptance. All right. All right, so uh, I think we have time for one more. Oh, okay, I see a question coming in here about social impact. Um, all right, so in terms of that, we do have a certificate uh, for social responsibility that you can do. Queen's itself is very much involved in social initiatives and, and impact within the community and abroad. Uh, we do have a center for social impact as well. Um, and as I said, you can do um, a, a certificate as part of a full-time MBA program. Um, and most of our students do get involved in some sort of charity or involvement during their year in the MBA. So uh, this is definitely an area where we pride ourselves on and, and our students whom are interested do have various opportunities to get involved at a community level. All right, I think we have time for one more question here. Um, since the MBA is one year, how does Smith help bring in uh, connected, or how does 
help being connected to alumnus? Okay, great question. So how are we connected to alum? Well, in a variety of ways. Um, we have such an amazing alumni um, group, not just within the full-time MBA program, but also uh, across all of our MBA options. We graduate over 500 alumnus a year. So the network is massive uh, within the full-time, but also at the Smith School of Business. Um, really how we bring in alumni is getting them involved in a variety of ways. Uh, there's a mentorship program, there's opportunities to come in at the career uh, level. So basically our careers team puts on a variety of events every year, both um, on campus in Kingston, as well as uh, at our campus in Toronto. And so we uh, have a variety of different workshops and uh, panel discussions, uh, things like this, webinars. Um, so our alumnus are very involved in our um, development on the career side, but also in enhancing your skill sets as a student um, to be successful when you come out of the MBA. So there's a variety of different options and opportunities for you to get connected with alumni throughout the year. Um, so it's, it's one of the, um, number one programs in Canada. So I can say very confidently that we have one of the strongest alumni groups of any, of any MBA program in the country. So I'm very confident in that and very proud of that. Uh, our alumni are always more than happy to connect with you um, and be part of the experience. So in saying that, I want to uh, thank you for being part of this experience today and joining me in this webinar. And I look forward to all your applications. And if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. I want to wish you all the best. Good luck. And um, uh, I wish that uh, your MBA journey is a successful one. Stay well. Bye-bye.